Welcome to my channel. My name is Moonpie Pumpkin, and this is a deep dive on my experience of watching Sex in the City for the first time in 2024. I'm gonna go through what I think of every episode, what's happening in the episode. If you haven't seen it, then you can watch it with me for the first time. If you have seen it and wanna relive it, watching it for the first time through me, this is the series for you. I've only seen season one so far. I'm hopefully gonna get through all six and three movies, I believe. Um, I'm gonna be watching all those this summer coming to you live obviously not live you can tell it's not live um, <laughs> but yeah this is that and I'm very excited and this is the first one and it's season one and it's fresh and exciting it's new and I'm so excited my first thoughts on everything so far is that there's always music playing in the background of the of the episodes and I love it I love it so much <laughs> and I really like the font that they use. If you want to <laughs> come on this adventure with me, this is season one and it's happening now. Episode one, Sex in the City. I really liked how you immediately know your characters and they did such a good job of setting everything up and making sure we understood who they are and what they do. And it's just, in your face it's there and they know who they are and i love it rundown of the characters and what i know so far miranda um i feel like she's the glue of the group and if none of the girls knew each other before she like interlinked all of them because she's a very i know this person for you i got this person for you she's the connector of things so i feel like she brought everyone together do they do a backstory on how they met Samantha. I think she's my favorite so far. She just has confidence and she's not afraid to speak her truth and be herself. She just is who she is and she's taken no bull from anyone. And I love it. Same with Miranda. Miranda is someone that I would like to be as well. Like just so sure of yourself and not taking names from anyone. Like I don't like you and you're giving me weird energy and I'm not going to take that. I love it. Um, I do feel that she's very judgy. It comes across as her being rude, but I, I know that it's actually intentional, but she just hasn't, doesn't care for the time of day for politeness. Why be polite when the words are making the same sentences? I don't want to make up for tone and your lack of understanding knowledge, right? That's what I get from her. It's... Honey, I'm home. In the first episode, we don't get a lot out of Charlotte, but overall in the season, I feel like she is the girl society wants us to be, like obsessed with marriage, obsessed with kids, obsessed with being soft and polite and not angering anyone. And I really hope she snaps and just breaks out of that at some point because I'm very excited to see that. But I really like her drive and passion towards her art but i don't think we see that yet in this first episode in this episode they have um they get they they have sex like men with no feeling or care for their <laughs> for their partner and it's just such an interesting first episode to just shove that into people's face and say here i am you don't get to tell me what to do and i have my own body and feelings and i can do what i want I love it. It's so cool. But episode one, I really liked it. It was spot on. Episode two, models and morals. What? 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 This man has the audacity to only sleep with models, one, gross, and then film them unconsensually? For himself? Yuck, 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 yuck. What? 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 Did people do that? Do people do that? Isn't that like illegal? What? Bro, what? I paused this episode, I think, 15 times just. I needed to catch my breath. I needed a second. I needed to know what was going on. What? Men are pigs <laughs> is my note for this yeah. episode. 
Um, I felt really bad for Miranda in this episode because she felt like she finally knew and got this guy. Not that life's about a guy, but she's like, okay, someone good. Finally, someone who can uphold the conversation. And then just to find out that she is the bet with his friends to find someone who's not a model because he only sleeps with models who don't hold a conversation and his friends were tired of it. So he just brought Miranda to have a conversation. Also in this episode, Carrie trying to find someone who doesn't think models are the best and she finds this model who hates models and he is just brain dead I want to say because he has this amazing career but once he's no longer society's beauty he wants to be a policeman and a father and a family man and he feels very lonely right now because he can't access that because he wants to pursue his beauty and Carrie's just there comforting him. I think it's very interesting. Also in this episode, Samantha goes to the guy who's recording the females and requests him to record her because um, she wants to be famous, I believe is what was happening, or recognize that she is gorgeous. This episode was crazy, wild, and I just don't understand why someone would record. Like record all you want i don't care but unconsensually without their knowledge the cameras aren't even good you would hear the wouldn't you episode three the bay of married pigs i don't understand how you can get into a marriage and then not trust or break trust it shouldn't be so common that there's no communication in losing feelings like B -b -b bro what are you doing <laughs> anyway i found the dinner party scene in this episode particularly hard to watch because all the married women were treating these four single gals as if they were aliens and just afraid that they would steal their man and then when samantha goes in there and gets drunk she later confesses that she had slept with three of the married guys so it's I'll never understand at some point I might I don't know I'm not married it's just very interesting that women so fastly will deflect their own kind as if this man <laughs> has any control over her and like she's not the one wearing the pants and she doesn't have all the power if he cheats, then his loss, go find a new one. <laughs> I, it's just very interesting to see, because I'm sure it's still happening now where women don't trust women. Men hate women, women hate women. It's just all so fascinating. But yeah, Carrie meets this guy who wants to get married immediately and pushes her to it and she says no. And then Carrie matches him up with Charlotte and he picks out the wrong China and then she dumps him. So episode four, the valley of 20 somethings. As a 20 year old, <laughs> I can safely say that men in their 20s are disgusting. And that's all I got from this episode. Confirmation that 25 years later, men in their 20s still haven't learned to this day. I shouldn't have to tell you to clean out your closet so your clean clothes don't have to go on the floor. Also, hey, I found mold in the corner. I'm gonna leave. Julia, don't tell me to clean my stuff. Julia, don't pick up my things. Julia, why are you cleaning my house? Excuse me. Cause I brought a dust thing from home because your TV, I can't see through the dust. What do you mean why am I cleaning? Can you not see? Can you not see it's disgusting in here? Sorry, tangent. I felt bad for Samantha's episode because she was like, oh, 20 somethings are the best. They have the stamina. They can go forever and ever. But she wakes up one morning and the guy's like, I love the wrinkles in your neck. <gasps> the audacity! The audacity! Sharks, I'd like $5 to kill all men. <laughs> Jokes. Jokes. Most men. Samantha is like, I'm gorgeous forever. And then this little turd in his 20s just quietly breaks her spirits about, hey, maybe I'm not young forever. 
Just as a quick editor's note, I am realizing that I've left out a few plot points, but I'm just kind of going through what I remember, like what really stuck out to me. But um, there are a few things that I leave out, and if you're a diehard fan, I'm so sorry. And if you're, just go watch it if you haven't seen it. Mm, I'm so sorry. Season two, I'll be way better. There are a few things that I left out, but they're not super, super important. Uh, okay, back to it. Episode five, the power of female sex. I gotta say this one is my favorite episode. I really love it. I really love it. There's just one line in this episode I'll play for you now. I bet you have a beautiful cunt, dear. <gasps> you can say that on TV. Was it bleeped? Cause I'm watching unbleeped version. If it's on live TV in 1998, it must have been bleeped. Unless they're just like saying that. I think they said it 15 times in that episode. Was it like a big thing that happened? I'm just gonna read what I wrote here, just for you guys, okay? Um, tear top writing and exploration of the woman's body and the power that it holds. I love the wording of the painting saying that they can't hold power, life, and pleasure. Are you kidding me? It's funny when men get older, they realize that, sorry, secure men when they get older, realize that they hold no power and that women are literally what makes the world go round. Because without a woman, nothing would happen. This episode, I feel, is how people feel when they listen to podcasts. I was just learning so much, but like I, I was paying attention. <laughs> sex! Secret sex. My first words written down on this episode, episode six. Secret sex meant suck. Carrie's old friend, they run into each other at a Chinese restaurant out of town so that men can bring their embarrassing conquests. And she runs into an old friend and he doesn't introduce her to his partner because he's embarrassed to be with her because she's not aesthetically pleasing, but she's good in bed. Don't worry, at the end of the episode, when he's finally ready to commit, she dumps him because he sucks. But judging someone on their looks and their background and saying that you would rather pretend that they don't exist even though you like them in front of your friends than admit that you have feeling for them is just so <laughs> icky, it's gross. This is the episode that Miranda um, is seeing a guy that she really likes, but she finds something in his drawer and she thinks that he likes getting spanked, so she spanks him and he's like, gotta go. Seven, the monogamous. <laughs> Carrie gets really distracted with her new man, Mr. Big, and completely neglects all of her friends, which she later apologizes and realizes that that is stupid and that men should never distract from female friendships ever. Hashtag go watch Dollface. Charlotte is, um, doesn't like giving head and this guy keeps pushing her and pushing her and pushing her down. And later in the episode, he says that if he, she doesn't learn to like it, he's just gonna go find someone else to do it. Um, Stanford, Carrie's icon gay best friend, is very real and honest in this episode and I really like it and I wish I could just be frank and come off nice instead of rude when I'm trying to be honest with someone. It's, it's a very hard line to cross and I feel like he nailed it. Miranda is frequently with Carrie's friend Skipper um, and Car uh, Miranda calls Skipper one night saying that she misses him and he picks up the phone and answers saying that if he wants to get back with her and like see her again while he's inside another woman. And then breaks up with her. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty much it for this episode. I really feel bad for Charlotte and that poor woman Skipper was with. Episode eight, freeze a crowd. Hello? I told my wife, it's over. Who is this? Hello? It's over, I told my wife. Who is this? That's that, that's where this is from. I didn't know that. Um, I really like this episode. They all explore threesomes and Carrie finds out that Mr. Big was married before and you know, they are talking about threesomes and it's just, it's just a very wild, crazy episode and men are just oh what what oh you sure? and that was episode eight mm. <laughs> that's all i have written for this episode it was wild episode nine the turtle and the hair 
Um, I have less notes for this episode. This episode was crazy. Uh, Samantha tries to fix up a man and make him look presentable to society and she realizes that she can do so much except fix his personality so she leaves. Um, they go to a wedding and they're the only single people there I believe. But the main part of this episode is vibrators <laughs> and how they are women's greatest friend. And that's it for this episode. <laughs> episode 10. The baby shower. I found this episode to be remarkably breathtaking. Just the understanding of women giving up their whole life and personality just to be someone's wife and mother is heartbreaking to watch and the writing for it and the acting is just beautiful and I can't imagine how hard it is to let go of your former self to become someone new. God! <laughs> But then, you know, everyone's saying motherhood is the, the best, it's the greatest joy of your life, but you're gonna have to not be this person anymore who you thought you once were. I just think it was a very beautiful episode and heartbreaking to watch. <laughs> episode 11, The Drought. Carrie farts in front of Mr. Big and he doesn't call her for three weeks. I shouldn't say that. He gets over the fart, but he doesn't sleep with her ever and then doesn't call for three weeks. Samantha delivers this beautiful line in this episode, not beautiful, horrible, um, that says men don't want their women to be human, which is a real thinker. I'm sure <laughs> 1999, 1998, things have changed, things have changed. Some people have changed, um, but some people still think this way. Like that guy who said that women should be back in 1950 and be in the kitchen. Yeah, so um, Carrie takes all of her feelings and just paints her whole kitchen. And Samantha tries to not have sex for two weeks. <laughs> and that's what happens in this episode. Episode 12, Come Ollie Faithful. Um, Miranda finds someone to have sex with, but he can't not shower after having sex because he grew up Catholic and he's very scared that sex is sin and that he's gonna go to hell. So he has to shower immediately after and it gets very loud. Samantha thinks about marriage and considers getting married and being in love for the first time and everyone is very shocked about it. But then when she finally has sex with him, he has a micro penis and she cries and she has to break up with him. <laughs> not funny. Charlotte in this episode goes to every fortune reader in New York City to try to see if she will get married in the future and they all say no. But I've seen spoilers and we know it's not true. Heartbreaking for her in this moment because it's literally all she wants. Brainwashed. Here I've written, men are such a disappointment. Uh, Carrie goes to see Mr. Big and his mom at their church and Mr. Big introduces her as a friend even though they've been together for six or seven months I believe. And she's heartbroken and later dumps him at the end of the episode. I think, I don't know if they get back together, but it's very telling that the relationship started with him seeing other people without telling her. And then this is how it ends is, oh, I think it was an amazing first season, amazing last episode. I'm so excited to watch the rest of it. I'm so excited to tell you about season two. I'm so excited to watch season two. I really liked all four of them have a personality and they have their own lives and they're not depending on each other but they are supporting each other and that is a huge difference that I'm having trouble with because I am very codependent on people but they are so secure in themselves and they love each other so beautifully and I saw the dinner scene where they're all sitting around the circle together and I screamed I was like ah, this is it this is the scene I'm so excited for the rest of the series please keep watching with me i'm just in awe of women yeah i'm gonna go piss myself real quick uh have a lovely rest of your day thank you for watching